I thought offering myself to him would be enough. That letting him into my sanctuary would symbolize my acceptance to his unconfirmed proposal for his thirst for me <laughs> was overwhelming, made it seem like intercourse would lead to intermarriage. So after sitting in my indecisiveness, layered in my beliefs, uh, pressurized by the world, I came to a conclusion in my confusion and my calculation that he was the right man. I mean, listen, single, not a baby daddy, homeowner, white collar civil servant, postgraduate material, tall, handsome, and did I say Christian? Baby, ha! I visualized walks in the parks, jet skiing in the Bahamas, trips to Dubai and Kenya, wedding bells, children playing in the backyard. I overrode all his red flags and I underestimated his faults. He was like a block of wood, a statue, a machine just pumped an erection. There was no decent conversation that would lead us from sexual talks to arts and crafts, music and health, sports and dance, life and death. And I should have listened to my skin because it repelled against him. See, I had come to prove a point that love hurts and I was right. Letting myself out like that was harmful. But did I have to prove a point through the baptism of fire that he was the wrong lover? Didn't care about my visuals and goals and whether I liked cream in my coffee? So as I sat and reminisced, I wondered, was it bittersweet that of knowing and experience that whether the clock is ticking Pressure is smelling all around me, age is catching up on me, and media is brainwashing. Never again will I succumb to such abuse and low esteem. For in this world, I can only be me. And I am moving on to someone special, someone like me, a soulful connection. And whether I die with no climax or romance, at least I would have given the world the best that God gave to me, living my life in my highest enjoyment ground and living my life like it's golden.